Amazing. Hey. Welcome hey, to the right? episode. <laughs> Would you like to briefly introduce about yourself and Eco Motorcycle? Uh, hey everyone, my name is Sebastian Robot. I'm a European national living now in China for over 10 years. Together with Nathan, we started this project about 2015-2014 or so. What makes you want to go into you know building the motorcycle? Uh, I've always been like an automotive guy, like cars, bikes, anything with like wheels. Even back in Vancouver, where you know, like, originally came from. Back in the day, it was literally just a passion project. We wanted to make a product that we would just literally use ourselves. It was supposed to be just a hobby, honestly. Since I was little, my dad always teached me how to fix my car, how to fix everything in the house and other things. Uh, amazing man, I mean, he's my hero. And then uh, we grew to this to become this company somehow. <laughs> super organic, super like not planned in that <laughs> sense. Well, I know for startups, find the right partner is very important. So what makes you two come together and decided to do it together? Well, you have the Chinese like, you know, the same like, Ah. Like destiny, a very close mutual friend. I mentioned that, you know, why don't you guys get together, sit down, and see, see what comes out of it? Yeah. yeah, I remember we, we well, well, I was originally just kind of tinkering around with uh, bikes back in like a four square meter ground, like literally four square meters, like no bigger than just this <laughs> pot. It's pretty much uh, about the same size as your average bath. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Really. yeah. We kind of came down, and saw it, and didn't yeah. run away, which was good. <laughs> uh, in America, they had the garages, you heard about well, this. Story garage started, right? People can tinker around doing things apart. You have space. But in Beijing, you don't have that option. You have so much concrete buildings all over the place, and you don't have an opportunity to have like a garage place to tinker things. Yeah, well, it's, it's like, you know, go big or go home in Beijing. So, where are the motorcycles are selling to now? So in the last few years, we, we have been able to certify the bikes into over 64 countries worldwide. The most active we are, of course, in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, outside of that, we have as well uh, US, Canada as we are moving uh, through. UK, uh, UK is doing very well, actually. And then, uh, of course, Europe is picking up right now. Very impressive. Is there any difference between the European market and the Chinese market? Night and day, night and day. <laughs> I mean, like, it's great to kind of like ride out here in Beijing. Motorcycling has shifted from base bone transportation to like a hobby. Now people are, are getting excited about premium bikes, you know, going out to like, you know, uh, tour or like go moto camping or something. But before, five years ago, it was like, it was literally just a, a, a transportation tool. In the West, uh, you start with a motorcycle. Most people have already had decades on two wheels. The whole culture is very mature. Yeah. In a congested city like Beijing, cars are just not an answer anymore. You, you know, you can have all that technology you have in your, in your cars. It's where do you park that? Yeah, it's so <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. you cross the Beijing in a car, it takes you an hour and a half to two hours. On the motorcycle, even if you have, even though you have to take the side roads, even though you have to stay in the traffic, obey the rules, and you can only go at sixty kilometers an hour. You're still covering that same distance in half an hour time. Time is priceless. I definitely true. choose the biking over the cars. Do you guys still remember the first climb? I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Johnny? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, Johnny, yeah. <laughs> A lot of our earlier clients, uh, you know, they, they buy the bike, they're riding around, they're having fun with it. Uh -huh. A year or two later, they, they come back and they're like, hey man, you know, I'm, I really like what you guys have built. Can I help out in some other way? Yeah. So he's actually, uh, even today, he does a lot of our part-time design. He's a great, uh, great guy that we kept in touch with and had a really strong relationship. Many of our clients are higher educated. They're, they're higher educated, they understand whether it's a technology, whether it's marketing, whether it's the other things. What can I do to make this project go better? I mean, I really like what they're doing. And I think this as well comes into what, they, what me and Nathan agree at the very beginning is, you know, we care about our customers. People appreciate a human touch, not just business. I think they also want to be part of something. That's well. true. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's also something you can touch and feel. Well, after a year or so, they've been riding, so now they, I, I feel that they want to jump in and do something more to be part of this growth. What's the core technology? What's, your, what's the barrier here? Well, for, for technical, that's an easy answer. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah, like the software, the hardware, yeah. So we spend a lot of time on the electronic control, you know, battery and electronic control, because we kind of feel that it's the, the heart and soul. It's, there's no engine anymore, um, where typically in a, any sort of gas vehicle, that would be the heart and soul of it, you know? But now the motor technology is quite, quite mature in that sense. So now we can do a lot of innovation, we can do a lot of algorithmic control, 
safety, safety protocols built into the electronic system, getting customer feedback, improving the software, improving the hardware, and then getting it out to the next iteration. Day one, when we build the vehicle, we already said, you know, if we're going to do this, we might as well do it right. It's how to make the things better, how to increase the rate of charging safely, how to increase, uh, let's say, ranges safely, how to make riding more comfortable. So day to day, we've never, let's say, over-promised in terms of what the vehicles can do. So the electronic cars are quite popular over the yeah. world. We have Tesla, we have all different brands. Do you guys feel pressure from this kind of electronic vehicle peers? Fresh like cars? No, I mean, I think it's great that the whole industry is growing together. We we take so much just ideas, innovations from the cars to try to implement it into bikes, where, you know, there's a lot of companies who are doing, you know, slow speed or, or electric scooters or whatnot, and they really have this completely different thought process. Yeah. Like they just want to, you know, maybe volume, maybe cost, cheaper, yada yada. And that kind of hurts our industry. So when you're talking about, you know, uh, Tesla and you know, these guys are pushing it forward. I mean, we're growing as, as a, a group sort of industry together. Those guys create the, raise the barrier, a uh, barrier to entry in terms of what a vehicle should be, you know, what vehicle, how safe the vehicle should be. Working with that creates a certain standard, yeah. which we are very happy to, to follow, uh, which in many ways as well, we create the standards for, uh, for motorcycles. Is there any moment, especially at the beginning, you think it might fail? Right at the beginning of the company. Because <laughs> usually just, at the we beginning We just had a thought about fun. that yesterday. Oh. Yeah. yeah. What was happening? <laughs> no, no, I mean, we, we hit our challenges. We have a lot of fun. We also have quite a lot of challenges, especially getting to what we call like, you know, production. How can we negotiate better costs? How can we negotiate better like minimum order quantities, better quality? How can we guarantee quality from our suppliers? What happens if suppliers kind of change, shift, or die right now because of the whole yeah. virus? And literally that was it, you know, like a couple days ago. One of our suppliers for a component um, actually stopped producing it because yeah. he just doesn't have a lot of business. So what do we have to do? We have to go to our backup supplier and then renegotiate all the terms. Got to make sure he can produce, got to make sure his quality is good, match it up, go check it out, get a sample. Yeah when you start moving into providing this as a vehicle to the people on the road, then you're taking responsibility for them. Then you want to make sure every component is right. Then you yeah. have to make sure that all the components are certified. Yeah. You take responsibility of other people. And Elon Musk said it, building yeah. prototypes are easy, production yeah. is hard. Maybe before doing the startup, you never would have even no. thought of it. Like for example, it's a light, does it turn on? Yes or no? Ah. Right, but no, no, it's not just does it turn on, it doesn't integrate into the harness. Does it have you know CE or DOT certification? Does it need reflectivity? Does it need brightness control? Getting the parts, then you have to handle them, package them, deliver them, make sure they you know they travel across the ocean all the way to, to your customer uh, thing, and they're when they're delivered, they still look exactly as they left the factory. So keeping all that things as they arrive from there, that's the trick. It's that not is the, <laughs> oh no no. Did you guys have conflict? And how did you solve it? Mm. Every day, not every day, but yeah, <laughs> most days. <laughs> I think we know each other for a long, uh, long enough time. You could say, you ever heard this sentence called "the marriage made in heaven"? Oh, okay. It's like a concrete and steel, two uh, two different elements, but when they come together, they still work together. It's something what my uh, what my uncle told me long ago. He's the CEO. He has the right of choice to get the things, but it's my job as a manager not to just say yes. It's my job as a manager to provide different solutions, different options. Not just to say no, but provide the option, provide the things, uh, or additional uh, suggestions, and making this work. Yin yeah. Yin and Yang. You need to have the black, you need to have the white, you need to have those two opposites. Only then you have the whole. But if you're not fighting, you're not passionate anymore. That's true. Um, I mean, for me, like that, that's maybe my personality, but I, if, if you know, I'm not arguing about anything, I just don't really care about it. Yeah. At least at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, yeah, he really just got a point of it, or this, you know, yeah. the software team has a really strong thing that they're willing to argue for. Yeah, maybe I'll you know, take a look at it again and, and you know, reevaluate it. Tesla's got their own model. Tesla's got their own idea. Then you have, you know, another company. Yeah. Each of them is writing their own book on terms of how you enter the market, how you think. Mm -hmm. And there are other companies who tried to follow the same model. They didn't succeed. Yeah, like Neil's doing the battery swapping thing. They're swapping out. 500 pounds of batteries. It's yeah. Tesla, Tesla was like, oh, that's stupid, but hey, they're doing it. Yeah. And it's kind of working for China. Exactly. Like Tesla just tried to do it. It didn't work in the US. It was too heavy, too expensive, too spread out. But you know, it seems to be working in Beijing. 
Yeah. So like, you know, this whole thing of rewriting the whole, uh, the whole industry, yes, it's happening right now in EVs. There exactly. is no playbook that okay. we can just follow and copy and replicate and have a right answer. Do you need to conquer some difficulties that's probably because you are like a foreigner? Um, to anybody who's trying to start a company in, anywhere in the world, yeah. you need to truly understand what you're trying to get yourself into. Uh, entrepreneurship is not a Victorian dream. Okay, you're not gonna have a let's say overnight success. Uh, Tesla didn't success overnight. They were on the market for seven, eight years before Elon Musk comes in, and then even at that time, halfway of what it is now. Each country, each region has its own challenges. Of course, somebody told me it might be easier. You know, you're a foreigner. Go back to to where you're from. You know. Yeah. Build on your strength over there and then come back to China and just sell in China. We will always have challenges, no matter where you start, what you do. And we've had to reshift our mindset and expectations and, you know, whatever you think the challenges are going to be, take that and add in the whole culture, language, da, 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 and all that stuff into it. If I can give one, you one suggestion, make a plan. You, you need a plan and then throw it out. What's the most important lesson you learned from building this startup? It's, if you're, if you're going to do this, I think the one element that you have to have is, is grit. Yeah, but my grit has come from the realization that this is still kind of fun. You know, at the end of the day, like, yeah, there's a lot of challenges. Yes, there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of fun times as well, because at the end of the day, we get to ride our product on the way home. If anything, that grit is not just for, uh, for yourself, but for your team, you know, you need to have that team there that actually really, really knows what they're doing. They're passionate and they're willing to make this work. I mean, thank you for having us over here. I mean, if you guys are interested in the hardware, you're interested in MoSQL's technology. Yeah, Mecha, mech -eng, mechanical engineering, software. From finance all the way to marketing. Nice. Please contact us. We're always looking for new interns, uh, people who wants to join the company. Thank you very much for joining today. Very appreciated. And I hope you guys to keep growing. Become a unicorn company. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Rebecca. Thank, thank you. you.